coming up on South Coast Spotlight. Learn more about a unique cultural performance coming to Santa Barbara. Take a look at some exceptionally high tides and find out about an organization that helps seniors keep it real in their own homes. All that and more on this episode of South Coast Spotlight. Welcome to South Coast Spotlight, where we take you around the South Coast to highlight what brings our community to life. I'm Dominique Samario with TVSB. An international dance and music company called Shin Yoon is coming to Santa Barbara. But Shin Yoon doesn't put on just any kind of dance show. These performances showcase more than artistic talent. They're time capsules of ancient culture. For centuries, Chinese art and culture has captured the attention of the world. You used to have to travel to China to experience it. But now, thanks to a special group whose mission is to preserve authentic Chinese culture, it's easier than ever to observe these wonders from a variety of countries. Shen Yun is a Chinese dance and music performance currently touring around the world and is coming to Santa Barbara in March. So the name Shen Yun actually means the beauty of the divine beings dancing. It's really a celebration of 5,000 years of authentic traditional Chinese culture. At the core of the performance is classical Chinese dance, which is accompanied by a live orchestra that combines both classical Chinese and Western instruments. However, audience members don't need to speak the language to understand or enjoy a Shen Yun performance. Most times you don't even need any explanation because the performances and the backdrops speak for themselves. Like a 3D animated interactive Chinese brush painting. So you would see, you know, deities coming down, flying down from the heavens and reappear on the stage dancing for you. It can illustrate anything from China's 5,000 years of history. The Chinese Communist Party is officially atheist and does not support religious expression. Founded on the beliefs of Falun Dafa, Shen Yun faces many political obstacles. The Cultural Revolution started in 1966, aiming to eradicate the traditional Chinese culture by closing schools, burning books and arts and temples. As a result of that, the traditional Chinese culture is lost. Luckily, Shen Yun is bringing back the essence of the traditional Chinese culture by not only incorporating the artistry side of the culture into their performances, but also reviving the thought, the morality, and the spirituality that had shaped China, that had made China, China. Classical Chinese dance has three main components. Form, that's dance combination, and bearing, that's a special technique for expressing special inner feelings through form and techniques. So instead of using straight lines like the ballet dancer, the classical Chinese dancers move in circles, which stem from Taoism, where circles denote harmony, like the icon yin and yang. In addition to the harmony within its dance form, Great attention is paid to its color design and wardrobe. Shen Yun colors are part of its trademark. It's very bright and vibrant, but at the same time, it's very uh, balanced and soothing to the eyes. A lot of designers are drawn to Shen Yun because of its colors. Costumes are well researched and genuinely reflect China's history. There are 400 sets of originally designed and handmade costumes for each Shen Yun show. In the entertainment industry, profit is usually the prime objective. But Shen Yun places its focus on keeping the traditions of China alive and operates as a non-profit organization. The sole reason for Shen Yun to be existing is that they want to revive the essence, the true, authentic, traditional Chinese culture, because you just don't see it today. This New York traveler, he said, when I visit China, I see China with my eyes, but by watching Shen Yun, I experience China with my soul. If you miss Shen Yun, you will miss an opportunity to see a 5,000-year-old China. 
and residents on the South Coast have the opportunity to experience 5,000 years of authentic Chinese art right here at Santa Barbara's Granada Theater this spring. Though not often talked about, our highest tides occur twice a year. Just how high do these tides get and what does it mean? Join us for our next segment where we dive in to the science behind high tides. It's not very often that you can see 40 years into the future. Twice each winter, exceptionally strong tides roll in, known as king tides. You can see areas of flooding. So there are certain areas, for instance, Ledbetter Beach, that whole back section, the pictures are flooded. Um, also, things are going up all the way to seawalls, breaking over seawalls. Uh, the beaches in Isla Vista are very impacted, so the staircases are completely underwater. The waves are breaking over the staircases. Uh, they're definitely impacting erosion issues and making erosion a greater issue, especially for infrastructure that we have locally. So a lot of staircases and also for berms and uh, the lagoons are environmentally impacted more than normal because that's when the lagoons will break and so the fresh seawater will come into the lagoons and that'll change the chemistry. They're a natural phenomenon and so it's nothing to do with um, climate change per se that makes these tides special. It's just that they're the highest tide of the year. These ones are specifically about six feet, almost seven feet is the tide. So I thought it'd be uh, pretty interesting to see tides like at this maximum tide. Uh, it's, the swell's not too big today. And I can see though on a bigger swell. Well as a science teacher I'm excited about the opportunity to uh, raise awareness with my students around sea level rise um, and bring in concepts about high tide and, and yearly maximum uh, into my courses. Um, and I'd love the opportunity to come down and contribute to the project. With sea level rise, the king tides of today may become the daily tides of the future. Local coastal conservancies are urging residents to send in photographs of the high waters as records of the event. The campaign is called the California King Tide Initiative. I'm just down here with Channel Keeper um, at Hammond's Trail and we just took some photos of the tide down at the bottom of Miramar Steps. So it's really interesting to keep a, a track record of the years and it's great to be a volunteer and community participant in keeping an eye on the coast. The National Academy of Sciences predicts that by 2050, we could face sea level rise between five and 24 inches, so almost two feet. And then 2100, uh, they're predicting that the sea level might rise anywhere between 17 and 66 inches. If a seven foot tide is a, considered a king tide now, that tide could be the future normal so if that could be added to the future, um, the, what the normal seven foot tide could be. So you could be looking at nine or 13 foot tides, which could be very, very significant. Channel Keeper is a local agency involved with protecting the Santa Barbara Channel. The organization is promoting the initiative. This is just one of the issues that we're working on to help Santa Barbara plan for the future under changing conditions goal of the California King's Tide Initiative is to raise awareness about climate change and sea level rise. The King Tides are great for understanding climate change because it's actually one of the ways that you can see the impacts of climate change, uh, which isn't very uh, common for a lot of climate change impacts. So you, the public can see the dramatic effects of sea level rise during these King Tides. So getting the public involved will help raise awareness about climate change and this sea level rise issue. And so then when policymakers are trying to introduce policy for climate change adaptation, then that there's a general public support for it because they've seen what can happen. The California King Tide Initiative is ongoing and occurs every year from December to January. To look at photos from past King Tide events or to find out more information, visit www.californiakingtides.org. Santa Barbara Village is a local nonprofit that helps seniors live independent, healthy lives. In our next segment, learn more about what they call aging in place and the vital role it plays in our community.
I would say for someone who doesn't know what the village is, um, it's really in a nutshell, it's a, it's a support system. It's a resource for people as they age if they want to continue living in their own home. I can think of a, a couple of situations where there are people who um, were literally on their way to a nursing home. They had uh, fallen or had another major health problem. They were in the hospital. Uh, they were told they couldn't go home because there was nobody there to help them. And they called the village and said, you know, I'm, I'm a member of the village. Oh, yeah, it's good to, good to talk to you. How's everything going? Uh, well, I've got a little problem here. Uh, and where the, the, whoever was the concierge or the coordinator at the village said, let me see what I can do, and organized volunteers to help them, especially during that period when you first go home from the hospital and things are a little unsteady, you can't do everything for yourself, and where literally being a member of a village has made the difference about whether somebody could go home or not. Many of my friends had already entered the uh, retirement villages <laughs> and I didn't want to go. <laughs> In December I had an emergency and I was at the hospital and I called Dan and told him where I was. He came immediately <laughs> to visit and he asked what he could do for me and I told him that I had to cancel my newspaper and I had to cancel an appointment that I had, which he did for me. That was a big difference for me. My daughter was in Ohio and she was ready to fly home. I said, you don't need to do that, I have help here. Firsthand, I've seen what seems like a set of small household services, which one could say, well, that's what the village, well, yeah, when you're caring for a senior, especially one with any kind of health challenges, that's really what you're talking about. The big stuff can get taken care of, like through the hospital or something. Well, but it's like all that stuff, like in between those big episodes, that's called life. And wouldn't it be great to have a friend, a whole organization in a sense, that's ready to pitch in and help? Wow. A big thing that a lot of our members realize is a value is the peace of mind. And it's not just for them, it's also for their families, knowing that there's one place that somebody can call and that the staff know you and they care about you and um, they can coordinate a lot of different things for you in one, it's a one-stop shop. You know, I think it's just really great that this is a movement that's really grassroots and that these are people and the communities coming together to solve the problem. That this is not waiting for someone, some government agency or a large organization to come in with a prescriptive model to say here's how we're going to solve it. One size does not fit all. This is an interesting thing I hear a lot. I don't, I think this might be a scam or something because why would anybody want to volunteer and freely give their time to do those things? Well, the main two reasons we hear are, I volunteer to pay it forward. I'm paying it forward. I'm going to need it myself, and I think it's a great thing, so that's what I'm doing. We also hear, you know, I wish this was here when my mom was still alive. I couldn't give this to my mom, so I'm going to be there for somebody else's mom. People are wanting something different. Um, it's not the same model that a lot of people thought of, you know, back in the day. Well, you get older, and you go to a nursing home. Um, one of my, the favorite quotes that I've heard recently from someone was, um, we don't write into the scripts of our lives that we're going to end it in a nursing home. A resource. Health, prevention, wellness. Community. Enriching. Caring. Connection. A leadership and engagement within your community. Thoughtfulness. Security. Integrative. Vibrant. It's like a family. And I think in a lot of ways that's really important. Well, that does it for this episode. Be sure to continue to join us on South Coast Spotlight for a look at the arts, culture, and community that make up the South Coast. If you have an idea for a segment, email us at info at tvsb.tv. And until next time, Get out and explore your South Coast.